Okay, uh, everybody, welcome to our webinar. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I have two people on the line with me, Owen Mock from Alpha Technologies and Pat Redman from Alliance. And uh, Pat's going to kick off our webinar with a brief introduction to Alliance and to, to Owen. Over to you, Pat. Thank you, Lisa, and, uh, and welcome and thank you to everybody that took the time to join today. I know uh, Fridays can typically be a busy day, so uh, we really appreciate you taking some time to join us. Uh, I'm going to provide a brief, uh, a brief overview and a brief introduction into Alliance Corporation and who we are, uh, what we do. It's going to be very, very high level. And then I have a few slides with respect to uh, remote power, remote, remote power applications for remote communication networks. So I don't want to take up a whole lot of time, but I just wanted to share with you uh, some of the uh, applications where we're seeing uh, uh, remote alpha power solutions go out the door. Basically, um, Alliance Corporation is wireless, uh, top to bottom. Our uh, wireless uh, infrastructure side, uh, this is our uh, carrier group that typically uh, delivers products, antenna, towers, mounts, uh, cable, anything for the uh, service provider side and the, and the uh, cellular service provider side. Uh, and uh, most recently, uh, a lot of the uh, infrastructure side on the cellular side has gone fiber. So we have a uh, fiber group that does an awful lot of uh, custom build, custom fiber cables, composite cables to feed the uh, radios at the top of the tower now. Of course, uh, supply chain management, that's what we are. We're distribution, uh, supply chain logistics management. We have another group that takes care of a lot of uh, uh, indoor, outdoor distributed antenna systems for the, uh, for the cellular side of the business. And of course, the uh, microwave backhaul, and that's myself, that's the group I'm in, which is, uh, which is broadband solutions. We have uh, licensed, unlicensed. Of course, we have towers, antenna cable, and uh, alpha power solutions on there. So any, basically anything on the tower, anything to do with wireless, that's what Alliance does. Uh, we are, we're very, very proud of our uh, world-class uh, vendor partners with a, with a tremendous product assortment that we have a uh, tremendous amount of inventory. Um, we have personalized expert assistance uh, from our sales teams and our support teams where we can make independent recommendations uh, with respect to uh, products wireless products, wireless solutions, whether they're broadband or cellular. Uh, we offer pre- and post-sales tech support, as well as uh, training on, on uh, a lot of the products that we carry, including certification training for, uh, for our vendor products. Warehouses throughout uh, Canada, the U.S., uh, Central and Latin America as well. Uh, on our technical service side, um, we have a group that will do uh, uh, spectrum license applications through uh, Industry Canada or FCC in the U.S., of course. Um, we, we will provide uh, network design assistance, path profiles, uh, preliminary engineering, if you will, for, uh, for wireless networks. Uh, we can pre-configure those radios. We can provide them, pre-configure them, get them out the door in a kit uh, for any project that you have underway. We can help out with, with, uh, with your tower selections. Uh, we, we support the, uh, we carry the Trilon towers actually, uh, so we can give you a, a, a little bit of assistance and guidance in uh, what kind of tower uh, and, and uh, what's required for base, et cetera. And uh, post sale support. Uh, our, we have a technical team that's, uh, that's quite good at the products that we carry, uh, so we provide uh, a certain level of technical support. If you can't get a hold of the vendor or if you've got an easy question, we can usually take care of that, and of course, uh, RMA and, and uh, handling materials after the fact. So briefly, with respect to remote communications, if you take a look at this part of the network where I've, I've got my mouse, um, this is typically a, an easy area to get to with respect to communications. It's uh, facilities-based, whether it's copper, fiber, easy access to shelters, easy access to, to uh, power, to commercial power. But uh, in the business that we're in today, we don't see a lot of uh, mining or uh, oil and gas exploration and production in uh, downtown Calgary or, or downtown Denver. It's usually uh, way out in the field, very, very remote, and that's where the challenge is. How do you get the communication out there? Uh, what kind of communication networks do you need? And, uh, and what kind of power you need to support those? So that's what we're dealing with uh, today. This is what uh, Alpha is going to talk about. 
I've highlighted certain areas where you're going to need either shelters or power, whether it's uh, DC power, UPS, or, or renewable. And this is what Owen's going to talk about. Is these points uh, on the on the remote wireless network where where power can be uh, power requirements are unique, and uh, where Alpha can fulfill the need. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, point to point, the uh, high capacity rings, as well as point to mobile point, which is a lot of the uh, a lot of the network components that I'm dealing with day to day. So on a fault tolerant wireless ring. Where, uh, where the mission critical applications are typically running on these backbone networks, they are fault tolerant in that, in that if a certain part of that wireless network were to fail, uh, there's, there's inherent redundancy built into it. Needless to say, if, there's, uh, if you do not have a good power solution at the bottom of any of these towers, and it was to fail, uh, you'd be in trouble. It's no longer fault tolerant at that point. So special consideration needs to be paid to uh, power requirements at any of these towers, and especially on, uh, on uh, high capacity backbones like this. So what we're seeing out there is, is that depending on the size of the ring and depending on the capacity um, and what, what's at these locations in terms of other uh, communication equipment, you're going to require some sort of shelter, some sort of enclosure. They're typically AC powered out there, but you're going to need a 48 volt, usually a 48 volt system with battery backup. Now I know that Alpha does uh, does um, uh, multiple voltages, so I don't want to pigeonhole them. But in, in the communication network, this is typically what we're seeing uh, for uh, for power requirements out there. And of course, depending on where those locations are, uh, there could be opportunities for renewable uh, solar or uh, large or small gen sets. And, and these are, these are usually high capacity sites, and they usually have a backup power alternative out there. Of course, off these rings, we, we tend to move to uh, a point to point to extend deeper into uh, mining operations or into the oil and gas field, uh, extension out to uh, SAG D pads or to uh, man camps, of course. Uh, again, these are typically AC powered. We'll see uh, smaller shelters uh, go out there or, uh, or smaller NEMA 3 enclosures. And Alpha does have a wide variety of uh, enclosures uh, that will fit the need. Again, 48 hours. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, 48 volt DC with uh, with usually uh, 48 hours backup for these sites, and uh, if needed, uh, renewable and smaller gensets uh, are are uh, are available to uh, to pick up any uh, any additional requirements. These point to point shots can be uh, they can be multiple multiple hops, so it's not inconceivable that off the ring this could be fed from from the ring, but you may have another tower out here and of course another tower before you get to uh, to the end location to the mining operations or oil and gas operations. So those ones will usually be a little more difficult, uh, especially uh, where AC power tends to be a little dirtier out there and you need to give some specific uh, or special consideration to what, uh, what's required to get to, to keep those sites powered. Uh, in a point to multi-point application, um, there's, there's, uh, you'll find these uh, at remote locations where there's multiple, uh, there's multiple assets, multiple operations that need to be fed, and they're usually done through a single radio. You can pick up 10 to 20 sites, uh, whether you're going out to a, to a, uh, a small, a small uh, SAG D pad or out to a remote uh, uh, wellhead field where you can pick up, or a SCADA network where you need to pick up data and backhaul that. And again, a small shelter at the bottom of the tower. With, uh, with power and backup uh, to ensure that those uh, mission critical um, uh, applications continue to run. And um, when you start losing production data out here in, in, at the wellhead, uh, people tend to get a little nervous. So uh, power is extremely important at these points. Um, Wi-Fi or, uh, or access networks for, uh, for SCADA networks as an alternate to SCADA or to pick up SCADA machine to machine. Uh, safety security systems at these remote sites. These are typically self-healing type networks in a field where you have a tight cluster of uh, of wellheads, or you or you're in a mining operation where you have multiple vehicles traveling throughout the mine. Uh, these are these are mesh. These are uh, these are for for uh, mobile workforce automation. So every vehicle in a mine can be can have an access in it, and you'll have a broadband access back to uh, back to HQ or wherever you're going. Again, smaller enclosures out here. These uh, these have typically smaller 
uh, uh, power requirements, so uh, UPS is often used. Uh, and in a lot of cases, uh, because the uh, power requirements are so small, solar will do the job. So uh, I know that uh, Alpha has a tremendous uh, uh, solar portfolio too. Uh, two-way, I wanted to bring this one up because uh, two-way communications and two-way voice are uh, extremely important in both mining and oil and gas. And this one, uh, this, this was one that uh, just recently went out the door actually for a client of ours. Where, where power requirements are quite unique because they're, they're, they're typically uh, higher power. Uh, there's typically a backhaul system in there, a wireless backhaul, to make sure that, uh, that the, that the uh, two-way communications are backhauled into the network. Uh, there's typically multiple voltages, not only uh, 48 volts, but you'll often see uh, 24, 27 volt uh, requirements out there. So distribution uh, becomes an issue. And, um, and what, what we did was, uh, and what Alpha did, is uh, they designed this entire rack to support the entire system, uh, support the backup. This was an 8 to 12 hour backup at this location. It was built to support this uh, Motorola, I believe this is the uh, Connect Plus platform. Um, it was built specifically for that, which did have some, uh, some odd 20, I believe it was 27 volt. Uh, requires a larger shelter because there will be multiple racks. In the, and this, this, this can be much larger. It'll support uh, larger systems than that. And in fact, this is one of the smaller ones. I think uh, another one that we did was actually a three-rack system that went out. Requires larger, larger battery to, to maintain um, uh, communications out there. Extremely important. So this is a prime example of what, uh, what Alpha can do. Uh, once we understand the requirements, uh, what's going in on all the equipment that's in there, and what the backup requirements are, uh, Alpha can, uh, can design those systems. Uh, at any rate, uh, that's where I want to hand off to Owen. Uh, he has a complete set of slides. I, I appreciate you uh, you uh, letting me go through the alliance introduction part of it. Great. Thanks, Pat. I've just uh, changed things over to Owen, so Owen's just going to get his presentation up for everybody. Okay. Jack, uh, one thing I forgot to mention in the beginning, that we did receive all of the questions that everyone asked when they registered for the webinar, and so Owen has taken those into account, and he's going to cover as many as he can during his presentation. Um, so if there is anything that we do miss, uh, after the webinar, you'll get a follow-up email, and you've already received emails from me, so if you want to ask any questions, just send us an email. Um, and uh, as well, on the um, GoToWebinar console, you should see a chat window. And throughout the webinar, if you want to interject with a question, just type it in there because you, you're all muted. And uh, either I will ask it of, of Owen at the time, or I'll save it for the end of the presentation. And one last thing, we are recording the webinar. So if you want to watch it later, as many times as you want, it's available. I'll be sending out a link. So over to you, Owen. Uh, thanks, Lisa. Uh, am I up and going here? Yes, you are. We can see Very good. Yeah. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Owen Mott. I am the sales manager at Alpha Technologies, and I, I work out of the uh, headquarters, which is located in uh, Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. And uh, I've been with Alpha Technologies um, which uh, for about 24 years now, and I've uh, been a, a sales manager and an application engineer involved in uh, it, mostly putting together power systems for the telecommunication world. And uh, as our company has grown, we have uh, branched out. We started off in broadband. And many of you probably have seen one of the 1.4 million uh, power supplies that are mounted on poles that say alpha on them. And those are for the broadband world. And those are all over the world. And that is how alpha um, sort of came to be. And then we branched out into telecom. And now we're into utilities and uh, prominently into uh, mining, oil and gas, and a number of other industries. But for the most part, I would say we, we distinguish ourselves as being one of the premier uh, manufacturers of, of the components. So virtually everything that's in our catalog is a product of our own manufacture. And we do focus on the wireless world and, uh, and mostly telecom. But uh, if you can create a, a power solution for one uh, one company, watts is watts, and whether it's 12 volts or 480 volts AC for a UPS, uh, the same principles apply, and those power supplies need to be housed and contained uh, in temperature-controlled environments, so they're happy, and uh, we, do, we are well known for uh, modularity and scalability. So 
So that's um, I'm going to just talk for a moment about Alpha as a group, and then about Alpha from uh, my perspective of what we're doing here uh, at the Alpha headquarters, and uh, and then I'm going to dive into shelters and enclosures, which is the reason you all came here today. Um, Alpha is part of a consortium of a number of companies, uh, Alpha Technologies. Uh, the energy uh, portfolio is a separate company, and their uh, their uh, focus is on uh, alternative energy, grid tie, and off-grid. Uh, Alpha Industrial Power manufacture um, industrial chargers, such things as charging for forklifts, giant UPSs, um, uh, oil rigs, uh, fire control, anything that involves um, novel complex approaches to uh, reliable power. Outback Power is a, a company that we, we purchased recently and is an acquisition of our company and they're uh, very involved in the, in the off-grid world and uh, in grid tie, making the componentry that ties uh, residences and businesses to the grid where they sell power back onto the grid. Coppervale is a company that is, does analysis uh, for uh, efficiency uh, on, say, a the downtown office building and someone wants to cut their bills by 20%, there, there's a, a, a program that's followed to uh, create efficiencies. So uh, just in a nutshell, we do create world-class power and solutions, and that is our focus. And we have about 2,000 employees. Um, I would say about half are in, uh, in, in Canada, and the rest are in, throughout the United States and the rest of the world in a number of facilities where we manufacture, and presently we're setting up manufacturing facilities in Turkey and, uh, and in Mexico. Um, we presently do a little, little over half a billion in annual sales, and almost all of that is in, uh, in power equipment, where we take ruggedized power, place it in cabinets, and, uh, and put it into the outside world for the most part. So these are the various divisions of the Alpha Group. I won't dwell too much on this, except to say each of the divisions has its own unique offering, uh, from which uh, Alliance uh, can benefit by by uh, basically accessing a lot of different products and a lot of different markets through the Alpha Group. Whether it be the rectifiers and inverters and converters and batteries that Alpha and Burnaby manufacture or it's the industrial charges that we can draw from uh, our Suwanee partner, Indust Alpha Industrial Power, or um, you know our facility at the Outback, which is in Arlington, Washington. We have uh, about six or eight factories uh, throughout North America, mostly. And uh, the Burnaby facility, where, I work, where I'm headquartered, is located in the uh, Metro Vancouver area. And we've been uh, been there for uh, about 25 years, manufacturing rectifiers and UPSs, and creating solutions. And uh, for so anything from traffic control to security to uh, off-grid wireless, we've manufactured an awful lot of uh, different types of solutions for customers. The sorts of products that we're known for out of the Alpha Group, or at least Alpha Limited, is primarily outdoor and uh, and uh, scalable modular power. A lot of these products are primarily negative 48 volt for telecom purposes, but uh, these cabinets can just as easily be 24 volt, or uh, the product in the bottom left is a large scalable UPS, and this is a, a product that would produce, for example, about uh, 80, 80 kVA of power. And so we do manufacture an awful lot of um, large, scalable UPSs. And the bottom right is an example of a uh, cell site that's being powered in the desert where they do not have any, they're quite off the grid, and it would cost millions of dollars to run the utility out there. So uh, we place a generator, solar, and, uh, and battery out in the field. And by, uh, by dropping the system in and having it running in about a day, uh, we cut the customer's fuel load, which had been previously running on uh, propane or diesel 24-7. We cut it down to about one-seventh of what it was by harnessing some solar energy and cycling the battery up and down. And uh, that really reduced 
the, uh, the operational expenditures on refueling tanks. Um, the other division uh, that we have uh, in Alpha Energy is uh, devoted to whether they're tying to the grid and selling power back, as you might see in the bottom uh, illustrations. Um, that is photovoltaic power that sells power back onto the grid. And in a lot of cases, that is uh, paid for or subsidized through, uh, through various governments and state and uh, provincial governments, depending on where you are. Um, we use these remote power systems to augment uh, what may be at the site, or maybe there is no power there at all, and you need just a couple of, uh, a few watts or amps to run your SCADA equipment. Maybe it's just one amp at 24 volts. Well, we can create a solution that's a, a solar, solar on a stick with uh, some photovoltaic panels and batteries and some controllers to power those, that SCADA device off, um, whether it's flow monitoring or um, whatever the, the network is, we can provide a solar system out in the remotes. This would be an example of a shelter that forms part of a larger uh, solar powering scheme. Um, while solar panels can be placed on the towers, we try to keep them as low to the ground as possible and oriented to maximize their production. So this is just an example where we're, uh, we are augmenting uh, the fuel bill by, uh, and, and reducing uh, truck rolls and fuel tank uh, fills by, uh, by augmenting the power with solar, pan solar panels. So that solar energy is then harnessed and runs straight back into the batteries, which are also charged by generators. Uh, the industrial power division. Uh, does everything from oil rigs to rail, um, and heavy-duty industrial rail gear, switch gear, utility switch gear that's 120 volt. Uh, those would be some of the examples of the uh, types of power products. So if it was uh, a switch or a switch gear um, ele uh, element required, we would uh, draw on that division. And out back, lastly, is uh, in Arlington, Washington, and they manufacture uh, a lot of the componentry. Uh, these are scalable systems where we, we build up uh, a series of inverters to harness uh, solar, wind, uh, water energy, anything we can draw from that, uh, from that area and harness that energy and control it and regulate it in such a way as to charge the batteries optimally. Uh, that is one of the problems with solar systems that people try to craft themselves is uh, they do find that it's very easy to, uh, when it's not regulated well, to overcharge your batteries and cook your batteries, and uh, there's a lot of uh, black arts involved in uh, optimally creating a solar solution. Now, we're going to get into the outdoor enclosures, and simply put, an outdoor enclosure is a, a shelter on a micro scale. So we're simply trying to take out, uh, you know, uh, sensitive electronics and power equipment and place it into an environmentally controlled environment uh, that's going to be, that's going to be work for many, many years in an outside, outside situation. Uh, we have a variety of cabinets, from the smallest on the far right to some of the larger cabinets. And typically, these boxes are meant for, say, rooftop applications, whether it be in Phoenix, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, or um, Texas, or you know, northern Alberta. Uh, a lot of these cabinets can be uh, air-conditioned or heat-exchanged or fan-cooled. Uh, to meet the requirements and the budgets of our customers. A lot of these cabinets will house batteries, rectifiers, inverters, and power gear, and we would allow uh, a certain amount of space for our customers to mount their own, uh, their own gear, whether that be uh, uh, E911 um, locating equipment. Uh, these are typically for wireless applications, these boxes. Um, and the low end, this, we've created a, a series of 20 different cabinets that are standardized. And in doing that, uh, what I have found in, in my years here with Alpha is that everybody's got a different requirement. And you can really bog yourself down in trying to create a custom solution every time someone wants a, one box or three boxes. Uh, you don't want them to have to wait too long or have it cost too much. So we've created 
a series of 20 different configurations out of this one product uh, where it can be heat, fan cooled, heat exchangered, or uh, air conditioned. Now, a heat exchanger lends itself better to a uh, dusty, dirty, uh, harsher environment, but it doesn't cool quite as well as an air conditioner. So if you've got, uh, you've got a cleaner environment, an air conditioner uh, may be best. And if you've got a dirty environment, a heat exchanger may be best. In some cases, these boxers can be NEMA 4, which is a, which is a uh, higher standard, allowing for uh, uh, wind-driven uh, snow, rain, um, dust, and uh, we can build some of these boxes to that level, but by and large most of our boxes meet the NEMA 3R, which is a rainproof enclosure for outdoor environments. And uh, we can place uh, AC power and make this an AC UPS and mount it on a pole. We can mount it on the ground. It can include uh, generator plugs, AC service entrances, batteries, and these can be configured quite readily and shift out the door from our available stock. So uh, we do, it does take a, a couple of weeks to get these things put together in, in the way that you'd like them to be. But whether it's a AC UPS or a 48 volt cabinet, these, these are uh, allow quick ship at a low cost. The next series uh, up, the, up the food chain in the cabinets, uh, we do have smaller cabinets, but for the most part I've, I've, I'm concentrating on the middle section of our cabinet expertise. This is a modular approach where we can uh, take a, a set of components and common side panels and top panels and create a variety of, uh, of different cabinets that can, can meet a, quite a variety of needs. You can have battery boxes added to the bottom or not. Doors can swing left or right, have heat exchangers, air conditioning, 24, 48 volt, AC powered. Um, they can come in a variety of, uh, of configurations. And I pro won't dwell too long on this um, because um, we're halfway through. But I will show you some illustrations. And this, I think this really well illustrates. Uh, this is called a, a flexible backhaul enclosure because that's one of the intended purposes was for wireless backhaul. But uh, you can see how we can reutilize and scale this product up by adding battery boxes or taking just an element of this and creating a pole mount enclosure or using a, a plant or sub base to, cr uh, to create a raised base for a ground mount enclosure. So this can be on an H frame, on a wall, or, or ground mounted. These are some of the pole mounted uh, options. And of course, as we get on to put products on poles, we, we can't have them weigh too much. So we do use uh, powder-coated aluminum in a lot of cases, so they, they don't uh, lend themselves to uh, too much corrosion. And they're very cost-effective, this product, and it's, uh, it can be scalable and added on to. These are the ground-mounted uh, variants. And these are some of the products out in the field. Um, on the left, we've got a microwave uh, power hop, microwave uh, hop, and it needs some batteries, rectifiers, and gear to uh, provide the 48 volts necessary, and probably about eight hours of battery backup time. On the right, we would see uh, uh, this is probably one of the this is one of the, if not the largest U.S. wireless carrier, and uh, they have their uh, base station cabinets mated to our um, alpha power supplies and power cabinets. This would be an example of um, how uh, flow monitoring uh, for wells and, and pipelines is, is very key. And we've got to uh, provide a, an AC backup UPS system to provide backup for, for controls, telemetry, um, SCADA. I'm not sure of the exact application, but this nevertheless is uh, um, AC powered UPS. <clears throat> it would produce probably one to 2,000 watts of energy. Um, and probably 120 volts AC would be the app, would be the voltage used here. So when sizing an enclosure, we have a checklist that we ask, uh, we uh, provide to our customers, and hopefully get as many of these boxes checked off so that we can narrow down the universe of all uh, possible uh, considerations when putting together a cabinet. Um, we don't want to bury our customers with uh, hundreds and hundreds of questions and go back and forth too much. So
so uh, what happens is um, Alliance would uh, would do a preliminary check on this and if and send it to us and then if we need more uh, questions addressed we can come back and ask a couple more but at least this is a great starting point this is just page one and then there are some additional um, considerations and I could I could dwell on this, but I just want you to know that these are readily available and in and past hands uh, and available to be sent out, and we can provide links to these documents. Um, they are generally available on www.alpha.ca, and you will be getting some links to that later on in this presentation. But the key criteria are what voltages are needed here, how much backup, running backup time with battery, if any, and what sort of cooling is required? And in determining the cooling, we've got to figure out whether there's a lot of load-related equipment. It's not the rectifiers and batteries that cause um, to create heat, because rectifiers generally today are in the 93, 94 percent efficiency. So for a, a you know 100 watts, you're only generating a few watts of wasted heat. Rather, where the the uh, the challenge is in trying to keep the uh, equipment within the container warm enough in the winter and cool enough in the summertime that op with it within its operating parameters. So if you've got a, a router or a, a piece of equipment that only operates, you know, up to say 40 degrees Celsius, um, you know, and that's, that's not really very high when it comes to outside plant enclosures. Um, our rectifiers and componentry that we manufacture generally operates up to 65 Celsius or about 100 roughly 150 degrees Fahrenheit, um, and that's the power equipment. But what does the load-related equipment require? That's usually the sensitive uh, piece of the equation. And we want to know, and therefore we try to tailor a solution that is effective enough, yet cost-effective enough, to meet your, your requirements. Air conditioners require servicing, and, if it, and they do cost money, so if at all possible, and the environment is not too dusty and it's not too harsh, perhaps we can go with fan cooling. That's a much more cost-effective option. And uh, in the event of a power outage, fans actually consume very little energy. So we can keep fans running in the event of a power outage, whereas uh, air, conditions, air conditioners often draw a lot of power and we can't afford to keep them running at all times. So the, the cooling tends to be the real um, the real key thing here that we're trying to determine. And if a customer says, I need 12 rack spaces uh, for my equipment, I have to then ask, what is your equipment? Because uh, I'm going to assume that if it needs 2,000 watts, that almost all of that is going to be consumed in the way of uh, all of that energy is going to be consumed and converted to heat. So if one was to take a 1,000 uh, watt load, you would multiply it, multiply it by 3.41, and you'd wind up with 3,410 BTUs that must be dissipated. So then we have to look at how hot can we let this equipment run. So those are some of the uh, considerations, uh, as well as what voltages do we need and how many hours of runtime. And if we can't get enough runtime out of the batteries in a box, we can do a supplemental box or of batteries, or we can mate in a generator such as a propane generator. Alpha also make uh, 100 and 150 amp 48 volt generators uh, that run off propane or natural gas. And if, uh, and if a customer requires their own generator, we can place a, uh, a generator plug and they can have emergency generators brought up to site and connected very quickly when the battery uh, sends out a low voltage alarm. I want to mention that of our, our rectification and controllers include SNMP Ethernet capability. So if you have a, um, if you can log in and do a physical site address uh, assignment to the site, you can log in remotely, and that is a very key uh, thing that Alpha has uh, uh, has done for very well for for over 10 years is uh, provide remote communications capability to all of our DC power products and many of our AC power products to allow customer interfacing remotely from the comfort of their desk where they can pull in information such as how many hours of runtime do I have? Can I do a battery discharge test for my desk? Yes, you, you can if you want to set it up that way. How, how, many, how, many, uh, how much gas is left in the tank? We can set it up 
to send out any sort of custom alarms that you require. And that's not an additional cost. That is the standard alpha controller that is built into all of our rectifiers. So I'm going to segue right into shelters because this is no more than just simply an outdoor enclosure that on, a, on a grander scale. But we do have more bits and pieces that we can add to a shelter. Now, shelters can come in aluminum, steel, galvanized steel, uh, fiberglass, and the products that we're really liking today are made of fiberglass and aluminum. And there are a number of reasons, uh, pros and cons both ways, but they tend to be very light, durable, have great warranties, um, they're, they're well sealed, they do not allow for the ingress of water, bugs, and uh, in a case of the fiberglass, they allow um, RF signals. If you are going to have radio equipment within it, uh, fiberglass lends itself better to transmission. Um, and aluminum is, is just a really good uh, product for versatility. So I'll go into some of the, uh, the applications. Base station, nodes, repeaters, control centers. I mean, the shelters run the gamut for everything from a tool shed to, uh, to bunk houses. But generally, we use them. We call them technical shelters because they generally contain racks, equipment, generators, rectifiers. Um, and we have to fit them out to be able to provide en enough power for that gear, enough space for it, and uh, security of that equipment uh, with you know the locks and uh, the enclosures uh, that you require and the air conditioners that you require. So in comparing shelters to buildings there are a whole host of advantages um, most of them being cost in time and mobility. Uh, sh shelters are, are mobile, can be repurposed, they're versatile, uh, back to point one, there's a lot less involved in permitting and regulations and land impact and engineering, and you can get a standardized solution that's um, built consistently. So you'll know if you've got a cabinet 1A, you'll know what's in cabinet 1A, and it's, and it's easy to inventory. And um, cabinets, shelters are... Um, are scalable. If you're doing a building block approach and you have enough power in one cabinet or batteries in one cabinet, and you need to augment that with a secondary cabinet to add more batteries and generator, it's easy to do. And then after these can be placed on skids, they can be elevated, they can be on um, elevated terrain that's on a slope, and uh, it's a lot easier and more uh, faster to bring these uh, out into the into the field than it is to, for example, build a whole new building, especially um, when shelters can be pre-configured uh, in, in the relative comforts of a, of a warehouse or, or you know, technical building facility instead of fashioning them a building on site uh, in inclement weather. So um, I was uh, told that we've got cabinets um, in Antarctica, northern Alaska, and uh, if and and northern Alberta. So if we can if we can meet those the demanding requirements of those environments, we should be able to tailor one to uh, to whichever customer's needs are. And with respect to oil field and mining, these would be some of the typical applications. I'll just let you read through it, and I won't. Uh, but I'm seeing a lot more cleaning, repair facilities, uh, control control cabinets where uh, people are visually inspecting. And so uh, I'll have some pictures of these uh, in, a, in a few moments. These are the elements. In other words, these are the, the, the bells and whistles that we add. This is where we add value. We're not simply selling you a shell. We are creating a complete technical shelter inclusive of rectifiers. Uh, DC plant that might run communications gear, AC UPS pieces to run a variety of applications, everything from cameras to lighting to anything that requires AC power. And then we'll place enough battery in the shelter on, uh, on appropriate racks. We can augment by putting a carriage on the back or in a sheltered area with one or two generators. We will include We'll install the cable racking, the climate control systems, heating, cooling, 
fire extinct, these are some of the elements you wouldn't see, for example, in an enclosure. You'd see more, uh, you're getting more um, building intensive uh, add-ons here. Security cameras, heavy duty locks, and uh, solar panels can also be added to the top of the shelters. Now entry level shelters, this would be a very nice little uh, shelter on a skid. The skid allows it to be transportable using, say, a forklift. And you can lift this. So you can have lifting hooks on it. You can drop it wherever you like. The R value on these can be phenomenal. We can get it up to about R38 and perhaps better um, because we've got some very thick insulation. I particularly like the fiberglass enclosures. They've got a 25-year warranty. And uh, they are quite durable. But entry level is about a 6 by 8 size. And we can build these up to 24 feet long. So we can add any features that are required, whether it's ventilation, air exhaust, air conditioning, generator plugs, and there's just some visuals of uh, the racking and the AC panels and the sorts of uh, uh, things that we can add. So in general, you can budget half the price for the shelter itself and about to another about another half uh, again for the contents. To, take, uh, to include all the power, batteries, racks, generators to get it up to uh, snuff, then generally our customers do their own RF engineering and mount their own gear and microwave equipment, for example. Here's just some of the, we have drawings for all of the cabinets and we're well prepared to, uh, to speak um, from a structural standpoint because we're going to actually be engineering the whole shelter up to a point. These show the, uh, how the, what the air exhaust looks like. We're adding lights to these, um, cam lock generator boxes, and uh, utility meters. I'm starting to run low on time, so I'm going to keep just forge ahead here a little bit quicker. This is a, uh, we made three of these last year. This is a 24 foot long fiberglass enclosure. Internally, in the center there, you can see a bunk room. We had to provide, um, or, you know, emergency, um, you know, housing in the event that uh, the technician gets stuck in a in a storm. So we've got to put generators, battery banks, fuel pumps, and uh, accommodations, eyewash stations, first aid, you name it. But this is what it looks like uh, in its raw form, and then we uh, insulate it. And on the inside, once it's insulated, we're applying three quarter inch. Uh, fireproof plywood so that customers can mount their own gear to the wall, which seems to be a very popular um, um, concept, and angled fiberglass roof uh, to dissipate uh, snow loading as best we can. And a lot of these fiberglass structures can withstand about 200 pounds per square foot, and we can augment that and increase that. But that would be about a standard PSI for snow loading uh, that we would provide. And here are some other uh, fiberglass-based um, products that uh, well service trailers. Uh, I'm not exactly certain what a boiler trailer is, but uh, we can do those too. But these are all um, elements manufactured from the same uh, basic uh, facility that makes our, uh, our shells for us. This, for, this is just an sort of a extreme example of a, of a shelter or portable natural gas filling station. And this is a, a really cool project. We did three of these last year and this is a central office, a telecom. One of the major three carriers in Canada came to us and asked us to build a, a mobile central office switch. So this is a central office telephone switch that is mobile and on a trailer and can be dropped anywhere you like for disaster recovery. These have uh, four or five five-ton air conditioners on it. And uh, we fitted these out and got this job done under budget and on time. I'll uh, jump into aluminum shelters. We can do these in a variety of custom colors and finishes. They're quite rugged and reliable. A little lower cost point is my understanding, I believe, usually. Um, aluminum tends to uh, be quite versatile. 
in that it can be mounted in a, in a number of uh, challenging scenarios. And uh, we've done uh, emergency backup power supplies in trailers for field servicing. This particular uh, trailer was someone asked us to make one that had a bunch of uh, rectifiers, inverters, so it's AC and DC and battery backup. And it's something you would use, for example, when you're going out to replace the batteries at your uh, a microwave site, you want to have some backup power connected in in parallel while you are servicing the batteries on site. So this provides the, uh, the means to do that. So um, I'm nearing the end of my presentation, and I'm going to mention that uh, a lot of uh, the information that I've, I've shown can be found on our website. Really, all you have to do is start at www.alpha.ca, and that's going to uh, open up uh, a number of solutions. And you would go in and look up the uh, technical shelters. The, uh, the checklist, the uh, site considerations checklist is on there. I'll provide the, uh, the address for that. It's right here. And you can also get this from Pat. And Pat has a hard copy example of this if you'd like it sent out. So alpha.ca slash shelters slash shelter requirements dot XLS. It's not immediately evident, so you do need to type in that address. And it will, it will pop up, and you can save that document, as you can save any of our data sheets. So to get your project started, I'll just ask that you perhaps print off one of the uh, shelter requirements uh, sheets. And there's also one for, uh, for enclosures as well. Then contact your local alliance representative. And together, uh, Alliance and uh, Alpha will work to create a technical shelter designed exactly around your specific needs and location. So uh, that pretty much ends my presentation on technical shelters. And I do want to uh, let you know that we have uh, addressed some of the questions that were brought in. Um, we had some questions from the various attendees who are online today. And most of them related to temperature control. I'll just read off half a dozen of them. And one of them was temperature control in the far north. And uh, I think we've addressed that to some degree. But it, it, it there was also um, one customer wanted to protect the technician. And uh, so we can add some, some, uh, some comforts to the to enclosures. But primarily, I'd say uh, it's more of a, a shelter uh, thing to provide protect the technician. Uh, batteries from overheating is, uh, is well addressed within, within Alpha. We have battery temperature compensation, uh, single cell battery monitoring. We have thermal probes that can be attached to batteries. Um, our charging uh, products do not, will we'll give you plenty of warning of overheating and will then isolate batteries that are having an issue. So you get lots of advanced warning if it's set up correctly. And we can provide consultation on that at any time. Um, with respect to animals and water access, I would suggest that some of the uh, fiberglass shelters are, and aluminum ones that are welded are well sealed uh, to protect against uh, you know, uh, that eventuality, and, and much more so than, say, a wooden structure. Wooden structures do tend to have a lot of gaps and holes. And uh, I've, I've seen some buildings where there's been you know, ants and all sorts of animals have uh, taken up residence in the uh, in the facility, and that's where equipment starts to fail as uh, they find their way into the electronics. So you do definitely want to keep insects and uh, and water out of your site. Finally, non-metallic shelters uh, oh, was one of the uh, questions. How uh, do you have any non-metallic shelters to allow RF? And that uh, is for the most part addressed by using a fiberglass shelter. And finally, the last question was fuel delivery, diesel, propane. Um, I pointed out that we can augment and reduce fuel consumption through the use of solar. Um, but for the most part, the fuel types that we use are propane. Uh, we will be developing a 10 kilowatt um, diesel gen set later this year. And, uh, and that pretty much concludes my presentation. So. Uh, Owen, Lisa or Pat? Can you hear me, Owen? It's Lisa. I have one question. Yes. Uh, has Alpha done any power applications with high voltage DC distribution? We have an application with a corridor that's 100 kilometers long to build eight cell sites, and we wish to bury 
MVDC with the fiber? That's re no, we haven't done any transmission line type 10,000 volt DC, and uh, I think I know who asked that question. And uh, I, in fact, our, uh, we're actually talking to a consulting company about that right now. We haven't done anything greater than 190 volt, which is a uh, 190 volt is called span power, where um, basically what you do is you have a central office, you have 48 volts, and you boost it up to 190 volts. And by doing that, you can run 10 miles down the road with negligible voltage drop, and then kick it down at the far end, down, back down to the 48 volts that you wanted in the first place. And so by doing uh, span power, you can, you can uh, run long distances by, and also reduce the cost of your copper wire. And that's, that's the whole intent there. We have not done any transmission um, voltages such as 10,000 volts, although I understand it is becoming increasingly common in Europe uh, we tend to use AC power in North America for transmission, uh, but we're seeing more DC uh, internationally. So I'd be happy to talk to whoever submitted that. Um, okay, or... great, thank you. I, I don't know if anyone else has any other questions. I haven't seen any more submitted. Um, I'm going to make Pat the presenter, just to finish off the... Okay, great, thank you. Thanks, yeah, I just, I just want to highlight to everybody, just as I mentioned, that uh, this webinar is being recorded, so you can watch it as many times as you want afterwards. And I'll send you a link to our YouTube channel. That's where, I've, um, where I put the recordings. There's a lot of other great webinars that we've done in the past that are recording um, them. We've recorded and posted there. Um, as well, um, we are holding another webinar next Friday broadband wireless solutions for transportation. Um, and I'll be sending out an email with a link to that. It's also on our website. And if you are going to be at any of these upcoming shows, come please drop by our booth, the uh, Canadian Comtac in Calgary, Canadian Mining Expo in Timmins, and the Global Petroleum Show in Calgary. Um, I, that concludes our webinar. I don't know if you have anything you want to add, Pat? Uh, no, that's good. I think we covered everything. Again, thanks to everyone that joined. Uh, I have one last, one addition, uh, one late addition. It's Owen here. I just uh, was brought to my attention. I've got uh, 125 volt DC and 220 volt DC power equipment available. If that is indeed what the higher voltage DC uh, requirement is, we do manufacture uh, quite a bit of that sort of product. So I just thought I'd add that. Okay, great. Thanks again. And uh, like I said, I will follow up with an email, and you'll have all the links, and especially the link to that spreadsheet that Owen was referring to. Thanks Have for a great opportunity, weekend. Lisa and Pat. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Okay. Bye, everyone.